the Galaxy S22 Ultra in 2024. I had a lot of people request that I go back and take a look at this device, especially after the news that it won't be getting the One UI 6.1 or those AI enhancements that Samsung has coming out for the S24 Ultra and S23 Ultra series of devices. So I wanted to take a look back, see how it's running on Android 14, see what's left for people on the S22 Ultra. And I have to say, I'm quite impressed. I really liked my experience. I sat with it for a few days. I had it, my, my SIM in it. I was using it, and I didn't feel like I missed a beat on this device, whether it was the screen, beautiful poppy colors on the display, the refresh rate was fine. Yes, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 isn't the latest and greatest anymore, but it still pushes that 120 hertz just fine. All the rest of it, the apps, the gaming, all the advantages that you get from this device are still there even after a couple of years now of it being out. And you can pick them up for a pretty decent price. You know, Amazon Renewed, if you shop around, a link will be in the description, about 500 bucks, 450 to 500 bucks. That's going to get you a lot better than some of the mid-range devices that come out. You know, not everybody's comfortable with a renewed device. Not everybody's comfortable with the limited support. You're going to get another two years of support on this guy here. So if you're somebody who needs a new device, if you need whatever, if you're more comfortable with something like an A55, which is coming on Wednesday, I know there's a is not coming to the United States or whatever. We're still going to review it anyway, but you get the idea, the kind of that mid-range phone that's going to be in that $400, $500 price range. If you're comfortable with something and you could get an Amazon renewed one that's in good, uh, good shape, and there's nothing wrong with the S22 Ultra. The one thing I will say is that, you know, if there were complaints that I had about this device when it first came out, yes, the overheating a little bit with the Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 1. Not totally resolved, but a lot better than it was on release. The one thing that I will say is on Android 14, I've noticed slightly better battery life than I got when it first released. I was in the struggling to get that five and a half, six hours of screen on time, where with this guy now on Android 14, I'm kind of getting that six and a half mark, which really, that, that six is kind of a psychological mark for me. I don't know why. But when I get devices over six hours of battery life, I don't worry about the battery life anymore. I don't watch the percentage throughout the course of the day. And that's where I was on the S22 Ultra. I no longer felt myself where I, when I first reviewed it and when I first got mine, I felt myself watching the percentages. It was going down. There was battery drain. There was a bunch of different things with this device when it first came out. Now, not really an issue. So Android 14 has made it better. So are you getting the latest, the greatest AI stuff? No. But two years on, is disappointing. It certainly, it certainly could handle the AI stuff. I hope that Samsung doesn't put like a paywall, on, uh, put it behind a paywall or do something stupid like that. But if you're just looking at, at it to get a phone, and if you know what you're getting into, you know that you're not getting some of those features. You understand up front what you're buying. If you already own one, you're in good shape here. You could use this for another year or two, have no issues, not notice any slowdown. I tell you what, I was doing NCAA bracket stuff. I was going through Twitter, you know, all the rest of it when their tournament was going on, watching stuff. We're doing stuff with the baby. We're going back and forth. I didn't notice a hiccup at all. I didn't feel like I was using a two-year-old device. I didn't feel like I was hindered somehow by the age of this phone. I felt like I was using a flagship from this year with great software. It has One UI 6. So you're getting Android 14, you're getting all the aesthetic stuff that they did on One UI 6, and it's a good experience as well on top of that. So you're getting the fantastic build quality. Yes, you got the curved display still, which I'm not a huge fan of, and it's a little bit sharper than it is on the S23 Ultra and the S24 Ultra, which is now completely flat. But still, if you held it up to somebody and you said, well, what, that's, that's uh, something ultra. You know, it's not a huge departure design-wise from the two uh, ones that came after it. You're still getting the Periscope zoom you're still getting the beautiful uh, glass back you're getting the uh, premium design all the rest of it so you're getting the s pen which is fantastic on these devices as always really no issue there so you're getting all the premium features for a significant discount and you, what what's great is that you still have some of the older features like i still have my because i don't have one ui 6.1 because i have the older device i actually liked going back to my original always on display features i liked having that again I don't know why they took that away on the S24 Ultra, but it's back here. If you never left your S22 Ultra, I could have my picture of Gene, my cat here, on the, uh, in, the, in the center here. Because it floats around. You can have the uh, customizability. You don't have to be stuck with that uh, Apple-esque always-on display that I think is a disaster and I don't really like. So you get some of the old creature comforts when you go back to a device like this. Now, it's still not picking up a micro SD card slot or a headphone jack or anything like that, but 
if you're comfortable with this, if you want to get one renewed, I absolutely recommend it. Running great. Didn't notice anything. Pokemon Go still running well. Discord was able to do everything. Gaming. I forget what else I was doing gaming-wise on here still uh, going back to it. But really great. Really just great experience. And, you know, if it didn't have... I would have been a lot more excited about the S22 Ultra on launch if it had this battery life. I think that it, that really held it back. Uh, I think the I don't think it was necessarily the fault of Samsung with that. I think the Galaxy, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 naturally had issues with battery life, naturally had issues with overheating, poor power management, all the rest of it, poor heat uh, heat management. So, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of what Qualcomm gives you. And that's something that we've experienced before. You know, the, the, the BlackBerry Priv would have been a phenomenal device if it weren't saddled with the uh, Snapdragon that it was. I forget what it was, the 808 or the 821 or something like that, but it was a Snapdragon that did not hold up well to time. You know, there were other devices that had issues back in the day with Snapdragon. The Snapdragon 888, you know, I love the S21 Ultra. It's a fan favorite of people here on the channel, but that device, you could, it, that device, we got really hot. And that was because of the architecture of the Snapdragon 888. It had nothing to do with what Samsung was doing. You could have added vapor chambers and all the rest of it, as companies later did. But on the face of it, that's kind of what you were given. So if you understand that and you know that going in, know that uh, Samsung's made it a little bit better. They've improved battery life now as it's gone through Android 14. And it's a pretty darn good Android 14 One UI experience with some of the old school features like the always on display for four or 500 bucks. So if you got one, Definitely hang on to it. I don't see any issue or a reason why you'd upgrade, uh, if especially now. You know, I, I saw a reason why originally you weren't going to get the AI features. You weren't going to get the seven years of support. They were offering you a ton of money on this. I think it was like 650 or 750 or something like that on launch of the S24 Ultra. So you were getting a massive incentive to upgrade. So originally, I, I did recommend people upgrade from this only because you're resetting the clock on support. You were getting an outsized value for the device. There were a lot of reasons why you would. But if you loved it and you held on to it, you're doing pretty well for yourself. You really don't have any complaints, as, as Bunny Pusheen is here for Easter week. So, I, it, listen, apologize for the lack of videos. Like I said, dogs be keeping me busy. I got sick as well in there. You can see my voice is just barely coming back online, but enough to get some videos done. There's a lot of other stuff. We have a lot of other phones. We have a gaming controller. We have... A ton of phones. We have the A55, like I said, coming in on Wednesday. We'll have all the comparisons. We're going to compare the OnePlus 12 to the OnePlus 11, see if there's a massive update to be had there. I'm also going to do my month review of the OnePlus 12. But don't worry. It's a lot more favorable. Which I, my initial review of that device was favorable. So this will be favorable as well. You know, it's been updated a little bit. I don't have as many problems as I used to, as I did on launch with the device. Still a really nice phone. So everybody was, it was getting all... Hyped up for that. I was going to get rep, uh, uh, ready for the one-month review of the OnePlus. Uh, know that it, it's going to be a pretty favorable review. But I love the display on this phone. Love the performance. Love the build. If you love that just classic Note design and you have your S22 Ultra or you're considering one in 2022, this is certainly a device that's worth the money, I think, at 400 or 500 bucks. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.